Hey friends, uh, welcome to video 23G uh, in the series of ratio analysis and I'm going to talk about return on investment ratios. This is the last video in the series of ratios, but a very important one because finally what matters is the amount of investment which has gone into the business. Is it generating sufficient profits or not? We already discussed profitability ratios where profits are compared in relation to the income or sale. But in return on investment ratios, as, as we are going to see soon, profits are not compared with income, but profits are compared with investment. So let's get going. This is one set of ratio which actually combines data from both statement of profit and loss and the balance sheet. Because when we say return on investment, return is profit, which is on the left hand side, which comes from the statement of profit and loss and investment comes from the balance sheet. So there are many ways one can calculate return on investment and it is said that you know there are 324 ways of calculating return on investment. Of course you are not going to see all those 324 ways. I am going to actually focus only on two important measures which are often used for measuring return on investment. So on the profit side the numbers which are often used are operating profit and profit after tax. And from the investment perspective, the numbers which are used are capital employed. We have already discussed the concept of capital employed in one of the earlier videos, as well as the shareholders equity. On the next slide, we'll see which is compared with what and what is the rationale for that. But for now, uh, it is uh, important to know that return on investment actually captures data from both statement of profit and loss as well as the balance sheet. So uh, return on investment is very important because profit margin gives you an idea about profitability but finally what matters is the amount of investment which has gone into the business and whether the profit is sufficient in relation to the uh, investment. The profit margin could be fabulous and great but if the sales are very minuscule what is the point and therefore finally what matters is return on investment. So there are two popular measures for this purpose. One is ROE which is return on equity and another is ROC or ROCE return on capital employed. We have already discussed the concept of equity and capital employed in the earlier videos. So I'm not going to get, get into those basics. But uh, I would rather define the ratios here where ROE or return on equity is defined as the net profit or the bottom line PAT divided by equity. Now equity is not only just the capital but it includes other equity such as retained earnings, reserves and surplus etc. So it is the entire stake of shareholders in the company which is what is under the umbrella of equity. We have already discussed this in the previous videos. So ROE is a very important measure net profit divided by equity and similarly ROC or ROCE is also another important measure. But uh, as we had discussed in the context of different profit measures, operating profit is more focused on operational performance and uh, naturally the relevant comparison will be with capital employed because capital employed as we had discussed is completely independent of the method of financing. It could be uh, you know substantially financed out of equity or a mixture of debt and equity but capital employed is neutral to that. Uh, and so is the definition of profit operating profit is also neutral to uh, whether you know you are paying substantial interest or not because by definition operating profit is before reducing interest cost. So it is purely focused on operational performance and therefore ROC is a very common uh, tool which is used for assessing uh, performance of business segments also. Both these ratios ROE as well as ROCE are expressed in percentage uh, and uh, the benchmark in India is 20% for now but of course uh, it may slide down over a period as the economy matures. Uh, in the developed uh, markets the benchmark would be lower because uh, this kind of return is practically impossible in more mature economies where population growth is also much less, the economy is also growing at much uh, lesser space lesser pace I'm sorry 
uh, whereas in india which is a growth economy uh, the profit margin and the return on investment also tends to be higher and uh, therefore the benchmark is higher in india as compared to uh, more developed uh, economies but over a period as india is also very rapidly uh, developing this benchmark may gradually uh, you know scale down so do subscribe to the channel and use the playlist to view videos i am going to create soon another series called as creating a lasting organization so watch this space thank you for your patience